Thanks for tuning into the Texas Scratch King channel. In this video you will hear about 4 special American Pitbull Terriers. Let's begin with T-Rex Kennels Champion Blockhead. Here is a story about a great dog. Named Blockhead that came from Mr. Victor Eckhart Yard as a puppy. He is double bred by Mayday. He has grown inside the house and we decide to call him just Boris. His first match was against a dog everyone was talking about in my country and was considered the best. His name Nelson Lord A recognized referee was invited. Mr. Tex-Mex Nelson picks up his game dog at 18 minutes. Next it was in Spain. We traveled 1,600 kilometers for this one against Fernando Mambo a two-time winner. Also considered the best dog in my brother country. Referee Cortijo Kennels. Mambo dominating the show for the first 10. 15 minutes with a single throat hold. At 25 minutes was all over. Boris had killed Mambo. After that. Had passed a couple of years with nothing happened. I really think that was all over for Boris. Because nobody wanted nothing from him. And he was getting old. When suddenly Korokota's kennels contact me and here we were on the road again. I don't recall the dog name. Only that was a very big one. Boris weight was 25. 5 and the other dog 37 kilograms grandson of champion Porfirio. Referee Raul. This was in 2003. At 38 minutes was all over. Boris became champion. Well Korokota is a true dogman. And he wanted another just two months later. So two months later there we were again. This time against a one-time winner named Wilson. Referee Evaristo. This was the hardest one Boris ever had. But it was all over in 37 minutes. Wilson thing when everyone thinking that was almost impossible what a great dog. But that match made the champion blockhead a four-time winner. We went to Holland to go for the grand champion title. But Junkyard lost interest. But still champion blockhead four-time winner was considered the best dog in Europe in 2004. By the European Game Dog Magazine. The next story we will talk about. Pinalero's Honey Register of Merit. Honey is out of White's Tab Jr. bred to Wildside's Tough Enough. She was a gift from my mother and the best gift that a mother can give to a son, dogman. She was the smartest pup I have ever seen. She always found a way to win the hearts and minds of people. She even won my mother's heart. It never crossed my mind that my mother will allow a dog inside the house but Honey made her way into the house. And became my mother's house dog and friend until she was giving to me when I returned from the gone. I had to promise to my family that I was not going to put her on the yard and that she was only go to be a pet. Well Honey became more than just a pet. She became a family member. She even went on road trips with me. To ranges. Training and you name it she was there. After my son was born. She became my son's guardian angel and I have never seen a baby and a dog take care of each other so well. I could go on and on and tell you how beautiful. Smart. Sweet. Loyal Honey is. But it's time to talk about her production record. Honey bred to Norman's Rock two-time winner and one-time lose game. Produced champion Roja the four-time winner. Missy Elliott the two-time winner. J-Lo a one-time winner also Deuce a two-time winner and one-time lose game. And Sweetie who was also a one-time winner. Now when Honey was bred to Pinaleros champion Humpy produced champion Kodiak a three-time winner and Lil, Honey one-time lose dead game. When Honey was bred to Hooper's Rhino they produced champion Lady a three-time winner and one-time lose. And Lil, Rhino was a one-time winner and one-time lose game. Honey was bred back to her son champion Kodiak. I'm waiting to see what the outcome is. Pinaleros Honey is producing top quality bulldogs and also passing her production quality to her offsprings. Like Missy Elliott one of her daughters which is owned by the Azteca boy. Has already produced a three and a two time winner. And a one one time winner. We will be only breeding Honey two more times and she will be retired. She will be bred back to her son Lil. Rhino in the last breeding will be open to a good stud. I just want to say thank you to my mother for giving me the opportunity of owning such a great bitch. In addition, I will like to thank my good friend EF. Westside Kennels for his advice in using Honey for brood stock. Honey has made a great impact in our breeding program and as well in other dog men and dog women programs. Her blood is here to stay. Due to a situation that was above my control I had to sell her to Wild Bill Cody. I know that Cody will continue Honey's legacy and follow my advice on who to breed her to. Thank you Honey for being a great friend to me and the family. In our next story we will talk about. Crenshaw's Champion Gator Register of Merit. To give a quick recap from my previous articles. Red Boy Dogs have been sought out for the gameness that they have been well known for. However with that said a pure. Or overly tight Red Boy Dog does have its shortcomings and many of these will be addressed here in this article. 
the red boy blood while contributing greatly to gameness in a line also has a reputation of producing a dumber than average dog. Hence the term dumb game. This becomes more apparent when higher percentages of this bloodline are used. There is also another drawback to this line when bred tight and that is in the quality of mouth that these dogs will produce. Tight red boy breedings tend to produce dogs with average to below average bite. This is something that is an undesirable trait for those that are looking at being competitive in the world of fast lane competition. The quality of red boy dogs has also diminished as the years have gone on as a result of popularity. Many people today are using tight red boy stock that is not based on proven dogs. Therefore the line in its pure form is not much better than it would have been 10 years back, so what is better than red boy? How can we avoid the mistakes of those that have only sought out gameness from this line? Today the best of this line was a result of a cross of the jeep blood into the red boy line itself. At one time this would have been looked at as a cross. However today the jeep red boy line is so highly refined that it produces a dog that is as game as the red boy line. But without many of the negatives that have been attached to a tighter red boy dog. So what is an ideal combination? The Jeep Red Boy Dog is no longer a hybrid cross. But rather a combination of the best that these two lines have to offer. It has also been refined over the past 10 years now to produce a dog that is as game as a pure Red Boy Dog would be. But without the high percentages of dumb or soft mouthed dogs that the Red Boy line has been known to produce. Another benefit of the Jeep Red Boy line was an increase in the quality of the overall dog. You now have a dog with an abundance of gameness high ability, and a mouth that would rate in the average to above average range depending on the percentages of each bloodline used in its pure form. The Jeep Red Boy line seems to offer the best that both lines have to offer in a 75 25 combination. That would be a 75% Jeep dog, with 25% of quality Red Boy blood. The higher the percentage of Red Boy in this mix brings down the quality of this line. As the undesirable traits of the Red Boy line will appear. The first dog to truly break out and demonstrate the power of this combination was White's Tab Register of Merit. Tab is a true 50% Jeep 50% Red Boy cross. Many of Tab's first successes were dog that came as a result of breeding to Crenshaw's Irene. Irene was a straight Jeep dog. The combination of Tab and Irene produced the first true tests of this theory. P. Rodriguez was one of the first to own a Tab and Irene dog and that dog's name was Gator. Gator made his championship into some of the best competition around in Rodriguez's hands. Later due to some financial issues champion Gator was sold to Crenshaw who brought out Gator for one more win into some of the finest that Mexico had to offer. The dog then became known as Crenshaw's champion Gator. Gator was a true 75% Jeep 25% Red Boy Cross. The story of champion Gator starts in the Deep South. Born on the yard of a white he was soon sold to P. Rodriguez. He started his schooling at a young age and he was at the top of his class. Brought out for his first he simply overpowered his opponent and won with ease in 39 minutes. Number 2 was hooked and he went in with a fury and it was over in 38 minutes. At this point his stud career was started and Rodriguez was looking for number 3. Finally the date was set for the third show. As always Gator was a bear for work and his keep went perfect. He was in great shape and all was made ready for number 3. This match would be for his championship all three within one year. The day came and the time drew near. When Gator was released the outcome was never in doubt as he was on top all the way. Now in a 37 minutes he was champion Gator. Many good bitches were bred to the little dog and it looked like he was quite a good producer of quality bulldogs. It looked like a great future for champion Gator. But hard times fell on Rodriguez and he had to put his Gator up for sale. Crenshaw was in the market for the dog. Especially since he was a double grandson of the great Crenshaw's champion Jeep Register of Merit. Crenshaw bought the dog and started looking for number 4. Some thought that it was crazy to use champion Gator again. But Crenshaw wanted to see for himself what the little dog was made of. The match was made into the four-time winner Bellin's champion Chambuger. One that many said champion Gator didn't have a chance of beating. Well someone forgot to tell that to champion Gator. His keep went well and the two-year layoff didn't seem to have too much effect on the little dog. The time was at hand and on the fly champion Chamboger caught Gator in the rear end. Where he stayed doing his damage for the first 25 minutes. Things didn't look too good for champion Gator. But he started to get a little rough on champion Chamboger and the tide turned. Champion Gator got up and started to work on champion Chamboger who got behind and didn't like it. He was a whip dog at 51 minutes. Gator came from behind to win a very tough match. I've heard a few critics of this little champion Gator. Some said he never should have took what he did against champion Chamboger. 
I think you need to take into account something we call gameness. He beat a four-time winner that no other dog could stay with for even an hour. He never made a bad move and when he could he came to the top and gave as good as he got. Something we call gameness. Something that this little champion knows all about. Crenshaw's champion Gator was not only a successful combination of the Jeep Red Boy line, but also ushered in a new generation of dogs that would be based on this successful combination. Gator unfortunately did not live an overly long life, but during his time that he was at stud he proved that he could reproduce these qualities. Crenshaw's champion. Gator has since become an register of merit producer. Another dog that is becoming quite well respected. As a producer is a brother to champion Gator named White's K.A. His sire tab register of merit is now part of the history of this breed. But because of his advanced age he has not been popular as a stud dog over the past year or so. And questions remain about his current state of fertility. K.A. is without a doubt the best producing son of tab register of merit. And Irene alive today. He is also a dog that has a significant number of highly respected offspring that are fast lane material in percentages that surpass that of his sire Tab Rom based on number of breedings. K.A. as mentioned above is solely owned by Proline Kennels. K.A. is not just a pretty pedigree dog. He's a well-proven game dog that is producing a caliber of offspring that are of the highest quality that can compete and win against the best that the world or last lane competition has to offer. Scratchliner Kennels recently became aware of this when they lost with one of their finer bitches to a daughter of K.A. So what is an yet even better combination? It is another cross becoming well respected. That also comes from the likes of Mr. Crenshaw. That would be Jeep, Red Boy, Rascal. Champion Rascal. A great eight-time winner and one-time lose. Rascal produced more good dogs than many recognized. With nine champions and one grand champion to his credit. Champion Rascal has had a major impact on the dogs of today. A brother to Woods Oso Negro and Boudreaux's Lupe. From P. Carver's Black Shine Bread to Carver's Orphan Annie II a two-time winner. Rascal bred dogs tend to produce dogs with average to above average bite. Roughness and excellent wrestling ability. Jean's Lug producer of record is a great producing son of Jeep from Jean's Honey a daughter of Rascal Jr. Rascal Jr. was a very important factor in this line. This dog was the best of both of his parents. Hard mouth. Lots of smarts and deep game. When I say parents I mean champion Rascal and Crushaw's champion Honeybunch which we know is Jeep's dam also making Rascal Jr. the key. Now, for those looking to get in on the ground floor of the purest that the Jeep Red Boy Rascal line has to offer. You should look no further than Caldwell's Dragon. Dragon was bred and is owned by Cold Steel Pits. He is a true son of champion Gator from Crenshaw's champion Miss Polly. Miss Polly is a daughter of Jean's Lug from Dupril Sadie. Sadie is a heavy bred rascal bitch making Miss Polly 15 times the classic P. Carver's Black Shine and Carver's the second as was stated a two-time winner breeding. Making Drago a complete Jeep, Red Boy, Rascal line. Now in story 4 you will hear about Sozina's champion Siganka. Sir Miam Kennels called me to come to pick up a female puppy I wanted out of Bambella Register of Merit. Which I had given to him as a gift 10 years ago. My friend from Budva, Simo Markovich, the big hunter, went with me to buy one hunting dog and to see if he would like some. When we came to Nevin, I stayed with him talking. While Simo went with Nicholas or Miam Jr. to find a hunting dog. Looking around they met some gypsy people and there was one little female which amazed my friend in the way he wanted me to buy her. So after few days of listening to him, I sent the money to Nicola, 300 euros, to give it to gypsy people and to put the bitch in a bus. Later I got to know she had one win in 52 minutes and about 1000 rolls because her breeder, Nevin, didn't get along with her owner. So he wanted to stop her with a much bigger and dangerous females. But he couldn't do it. Her name was Bibi and it was me to give her name Sigenka Gypsy Woman. First it took me half a year to get her fully recovered. She didn't know what dry food was and had never drank fresh water before. Her only food were dead fishes from the dumps. Then I hooked her against the best in her weight. Alan's champion Zuda a four-time winner. Komeni and I traveled to Croatia where we were considered complete outsiders. But Siganka surprised all. She won with no injuries while champion Zuda was picked up before this champion Zuda killed all of her opponents. For her champion title I hooked her against Floyd's champion Tejga who was a two-time best in show. Again. We were considered outsiders. And again Siganka was brilliant. Tejga was picked up and she gave a dead game scratch rolling three times over her head to complete it. Time was 1 hour and 24 minutes. Then I decided to retire her and finish her sporting career. Because she had very difficult life before coming to me. Especially in the period of staying with the gypsy people where she was rolled three times a day. 
but constant trash talking by Rebus Kennels convinced me to bring her out again this time against Rebus Kennels Yelena a one-time winner. Our opponents said their bitch would kill her in 17 minutes. Again. Champion Sigenka proved she is the best at her weight. She stopped Yelena easily in 39 minutes. Her first show was at 33 pounds. I showed her at 13.4 kilograms 29.5 pounds against Allen's champion Zuda. Later I couldn't find the opponent in her weight. So I hooked her with Floyd's champion Tejga at 14.60 kilograms 31 pounds and for her fourth against Rebus Yelena in 13.800 kilograms. 30.3 pounds her style is very difficult for her opponents. She is extremely healthy and strong for her weight. It seemed to all our opponents their bitches would have an easy job. But by the end Siganka was just a bit better than her opponents. As much as she needed to win. As the American guys say. She is the one of destroyer dogs. Now she is retired. I am 99% sure I won't let her go for her grand champion title. She deserves to enjoy the rest of her life whelping pups. Since she came to me. She has always been in keep. I don't have any pups off of her. So I prefer to see her enjoy now. She proved her quality in short order also without a grand champion title. In a period of 5 to 6 months. Winning over highly regarded champions. Allen's champion Zuda 4-time winner and Floyd's champion Tejga 2-time best in show. This story is credited to Banjo Sozina Kennels. Thanks again for listening to the Texas Scratch King channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. Like and share the video. Until the next time my friends. As we always say. Never submit to life and keep scratching every time.